Hello everyone, I am working on a power distribution board for this little robotic arm project and th these are a bunch of regulators right here. They are rated for a couple amps a piece and they're potentially going to get a little bit warm. Maybe, probably not that much, but just in the kind of like my common theme scheme motive of, you know, overkill, things that I've learned that I'm always trying to just redo even if I don't need to do it exactly. Um, I'm making a bunch of thermal vias to try to help dissipate the heat. So if I, if I flood this, then you'll see kind of what I'm talking about. I don't have the front layer on. There's the front layer. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm pinning the top grounded copper layer to the bottom copper layer, grounded copper layer. You see, so what's the, what the deal is, first off, you gotta make sure that you run all your traces that are not ground away from your pads right here because you don't want them cutting through. So that can be a little bit of a challenge. And then you're going to put by hand a bunch of vias in like this. And if you look over here, what I did, and I've did, uh, done a different video on this about creating arrays. You can make one of these and then you, you right click on it and you can say create array and then you can make as many as you want, like 20 down this way, 16 this way, whatever you need, you see? So it's a nice way, to easy way to get a whole bunch in a line. Now there is one other trick that I also talked about in a different video is that if you want to have these vias understand that they're ground or whatever your flooded planes are, let me unflood this. I'll turn back on the, the top here and I'll unflood it. If I place a via in here somewhere like this, it doesn't get a name on it. It doesn't know what net to attach itself to. So this is also a little bit challenging. Um, what you have to do is you say, well, I want to put a via, you know, here, here, and here. But if you've got the thing flooded, you can't exactly tell looking through the top layer here if I'm going to drill down through something else important. So what I'm doing also, by the way, is I'm hitting control B and B. So B will flood it, control B unfloods it. I just talked about this in, in a previous video. Um, so what I'll do is I'll look and I'll say, okay, say I want to put a via right here, but I don't want to hit any of these things. Well, I'll hover right where I want it to be <laughs> hit B and then it'll flood and then I can click and then I'll get a via that understands that it's on the ground net. Do you see? And then if I hit control B, you see that it's not hitting anything. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't actually need it there. Now I did just notice this, but it's not a problem in case uh, you caught this. This is what I was talking about. Don't do. So here is the regulator out and the, the power outs going across here. And so if I want to create a thermal via right here, this is going to get in the way. I mean, I could still do it, but I can't put any via right here. So in a way, I'm losing a little tiny little bit of heat dissipation by not having that via there. But this is the 7805. And this one here is just, as you notice, the trace is quite a bit smaller than the others. This is just for powering the Arduino that's up on the top board. So there's a couple Arduinos talking I2C to each other on a board that's above this. And, um, and then uh, they're also controlling the eight servos that are going to the different robot arm, to the, to the arm itself. Then down here are a little bit uh, higher power regulators. They're still, they're 7.5 volts out with about two amps a piece, you know? So they've got potential to maybe get some, uh, make some heat there. So that's why I'm pinning it, okay? So now that I've forwarded all that, here's what I wanted to show you. This is just my cute little tips and tricks. And I thought maybe you could even make this into a footprint, but I'm not sure. I kind of don't think it would work. Over here, you see, I've created a little pattern but also notice that they already have GND on them. You can make a little pattern off to the side, but it won't be attached to the ground net. So do what I just said first, flood everything, put every all the, the, the vias in where you want them, and it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but you shift select each one so you don't accidentally get everything else, and then you do a control D for duplicate, and then you take them off to the side over here, you see? 
then the idea is now that you've got your little pattern here, because quite frequently I end up doing things like this where we've got the hole here, the mounting hole for the TO220, and you know, this is this is thermal relief up here on that tab as well and down here. So I'd kind of like to get a few, you know, stitches all around there, but dodging the hole. So I got this kind of custom pattern. So then you can copy this, hit control D, so now I have a duplicate. And um, I, oops, 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 I got to change this. No, 0.5 is okay. Sorry about that. Make sure your grid is set how you like it. Uh, in this case, it's not going to be perfectly aligned. So I'll move this in here, get it about where I want it to be. Now, if I hit that trace above, that's okay because that's also ground, you see? So when I was running things through, I knew I didn't care about that because when I flood it, it's just going to run all of that ground into, you know, a big giant flood. So then come back over here, grab this, control D, move it over, and place it in. Uh oh, uh oh, come on. I'm kind of trying to see that it's aligned with the, the one to the side of it. Not that you're even going to see this, right? Because these are pretty small vias. Okay, yeah, that one's off. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. Just uh, how to make a patterned uh, thermal via for any project you're working on. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. I've got one more thing to show you that I had to do with this board. This is one of two. It's a match set, so I've got these mounting holes like this so that I can mount another one right on top. Um, it's 100 by 100, so it's, it's pretty large. Um, but I've got these... Uh, it's basically a board-to-board -board interconnect, but I didn't want to spend the time to try to find a connector, so I just made a 10-pin uh, footprint. But I wanted this to align with the one on top, and so... Uh, I never use this, but I wanted to show you this over here. There is dimension now. It's not a constraint. It's not like in Katia or Fusion to where I can make something be a certain dimension. But what I can do is I can come into here and I can get right in the center of that. Yeah, maybe I could. I could get right in the center of that hole right there. And then I could bring it over carefully. Make sure you're not going at an angle. And it will tell me, come on, one more click, there we go, how far away it is. And then I can come back here, go to this, go straight up, get to there, and pull it out this direction. So I did this on the board, the other board, the, 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 the mate for this, and um, having this here is nice. I actually went so far as to make this, um, if I edit this, you see it's on the front silk screen. Put it on, you know, the fab layer or, or something like that so that it's not going to print or just delete it when you're done with it. But it was a nice, easy way for me to know where this was in position to, you know, this top left corner of the board so I could make both sides be the same. So the idea is then I'll have wires going from one to the other just straight up. It's not going to be a tight fit. I want to make sure that I could fold the thing open, but uh, you get the point. All right. So that's it on thermal via patterning and adding some dimensions.